Whenever you are ready, my friend. Okay. Has anyone in this room ever felt threatened? Probably everyone at one point or another. Well, for some, it may have only been the wrath of a parent you feared. Perhaps when you got called down to Mr. Vitali's office, you scored poorly on that algebra test. Or maybe a social media debacle while someone was criticizing your favorite team and you just had to jump to defend them. But for some people, this feeling of insecurity and fear is present each and every day. With most of us residing in communities like Lima, Huntington Falls, and Mendez, we live pretty sheltered lives. So we may be all aware of more serious issues, have never had to face them, never had to live with them. Here, we have little threat like kidnappers, murderers, robbers, gang violence. But for some people, these things are daily reality. For these people, guns offer some sort of protection, a sense of security and safety to mollify those who are filled with fear. Guns protect them against people who could harm them, and often, guns protect us against our government. Gun control equals government control. Simply put, when we have the rights to guns taken away from us, we are having our rights taken away. Hundreds of years ago, our founding fathers wanted to make sure our government would never have excessive power over its citizens. So they wrote the Bill of Rights, outlining the freedoms of the American people. Today, we are placing emphasis on one pillar of this bill, the right to bear arms. In 1876, it was ruled that the Constitution, or even the Bill of Rights, does not simply give citizens this right to bear arms, but that the federal government does not have the power to restrict guns. So what we are talking about here today, whether or not gun laws should be more stringent, is not about passing new legislation or proposing gratuitous restrictive measures. It's about changing the document this country was founded upon. Throughout the history of this great nation, only one other amendment has ever been repealed. Why should this one be? Two minutes, 15 seconds. Introduction. My fellow classmates, over the next few minutes, each of our sides will conduct rhetorical warfare in an attempt to persuade you towards one side or the other. I must ask the judges to be impartial and exclusively listen to the facts being presented here to make your decision, as I know that the pro side will provide superior evidence. Now, I will present you with an egregious anecdote to show you the truth about the destructive power of firearms. Imagine a, a scene of hope and innocence. It's 9.35 in the morning. A mist covers the ground on a crisp November morning. Students and teachers at the local elementary school sit in, the cl in class with a kind of ebullience that is characteristic of young, innocent children, their whole lives ahead of them, and hopes and dreams for the future. Suddenly, bullets tear through the front entrance of the school, shattering the window of the lobby. Over the next few minutes, one man with a pistol and assault rifle would bur brutally murder 26 people, 20 of them children no older than seven. Their bodies lay scattered on the gymnasium and hallway floor robbed of the many long years of their futures and denied all of the experiences and moments that they would have lived. All because one man had access to some of the most dangerous inventions ever produced by humans. Imagine the terror of receiving a call from your child's school saying that a man with a gun had shot your child, whom you had raised and loved more deeply than anything in the world. Or worse, imagine watching helpless as you saw the destruction on the news. For safe, mentally healthy people, these weapons can be tools of self-defense, hunting, or stress relief at a shooting range. But we do not live in a perfect world, and those who would harm our children and others will exploit the government's leniency towards firearms. One minute, 49 seconds. Point one.
if you're locked in a room with a gun, and then with just a gunman, and then both the gun and the man, when would you be most frightened? Most likely, when locked in the room with the gun and the man, and maybe the man himself. Of course, no one would say the first one, because you could just pick up the gun and blow the whoever's brains out that locked you in. There. This just goes to show that it's not the gun itself that we need to be wary of. It's a gun is a gun. A gun that I know of cannot pick itself up. It cannot load itself. It cannot direct itself at the helpless target, and it cannot pull its own trigger. A gun is nothing without a person. So what's with the gun laws? Why punish the guns for the potential harm an injurious human can do with them? After all, it is not the per is it not the person doing those actions? If your family is shot and killed, who do you prosecute? Are you going to throw the gun in jail or put it on death row? No, because it's not the auspicious, the gun, auspicious gun we need fear of or get rid of. It's the person. But it's the person who pulls the trigger, is it not? What's the point when that person is without a gun or can't access a gun as easily. The person can still utilize an arsenal of other weapons. By itself, a gun is harmless and can be beneficial to those who use it for protection. A gun can only be dangerous in the hands of those who have bad intentions. I deprive them of their good nature purpose because of a couple ill-intentioned people. One minute, 48 seconds. Rebuttal. Okay, so uh, you said that if you were just locked in a room with just this gun and this man, you see the gun and your first thought is to blow out their brains. I think there's a problem there. Uh, also, you say that guns are only harmless when they're in the hands of the wrong people. What about the children that just got into daddy's safe and were holding this gun and all of a sudden you don't have a kid anymore? Doesn't seem like it's the, the wrong person who had their hands on that gun. 31 seconds. Point one pro. <laughs> this debate is centralized around one main point. Gun control laws need to be more stringent. Based on the multitudinous number of mass shootings that have occurred within the past few years, it is obvious that this claim is true and needs to be acted and need to be put into action. One such awful shooting that I'm sure you all remember took place in Newtown, Connecticut, Sandy Hook Elementary School, where a 20-year-old man opened fire on the school, killing 20 innocent young children. Another haunting event was the famous San Bernardino shooting and attempted bombing of the Inland Regional Center in California where 14 innocent people lost their lives and another 22 were severely injured. Along with these two aberrant occurrences is the Orlando nightclub shooting that happened just last year, where an astonishing 49 people were brutally murdered, along with another 53 severely injured. Even Source 6 details a sickening personal account of Colin Goddard's experience of the Virginia Tech shooting of 2007. His words describe the horrific and frenetic events that occurred during that dreadful day in our country's history and how he has learned to value it every day he lives on this planet. I know I'm guessing you can sense a common theme. All the people who were killed or hurt by any of these flagrant acts of war were innocent and did not deserve to die. They were just living, they were just living their everyday lives until they were stopped short by these malicious acts. You're probably also thinking, I wish there was some way to prevent such terrible things from ever happening again. Well, there is, and the solution is amending gun control laws so that they are much more stringent than they are now, making it harder for the dangerous people to get a hold of guns and inflicting harm on any more people. This is the only logical way to protect the lives of the hardworking, valuable, and innocent people of our world who deserve to live out their lives just like everybody else on the planet. Okay, one minute, 36 seconds. Rebuttal. Uh, mass shootings are horrible. We can all agree on that. But we can also agree on the fact that the shooters are at fault, not the guns. Um, the shooters should have never had guns, and that's not the gun control law's fault. That's just whoever gave them the guns, they probably got them illegally. So 
it's not the law's fault. They went against the law. And again, just like our first point said, we're not blaming guns, we're blaming the people. And if the people want to commit these horrible acts, then they're going to find a way to get their hands on a gun. 33 seconds.